Today we're going to look at some visual materials that you may find in archives and special collections. Um, and as you'll see as we go along, that can include um, very different formats um, other than the, the usual uh, paper archives um, that you um, immediately think of. All the materials that we have out on the table today are from the Andrew Wall Centre for the Study of African and Asian Christianity, uh, which um, is physically located above the reading room. And as you can see, there's quite, quite an eclectic mix of the different formats within the archive side of the uh, collection. We have a number of um, cassette tapes and video cassettes um, that are now obsolete. It's an obsolete format. Uh, very difficult to um, get hold of the hardware that you need to um, listen to and view this material. So uh, not many people now have a cassette tape player and or a video recorder. Um, with some of them as well we have um, there's uh, certain talks um, on say African Christianity and with it you'll get the takeaway um, tape of the talk and um, this is a film reel as well. This will come in this lovely commemorative box so something to take away with you. However this is material that we would now require some expert uh, input in um, being able to uh, digitise this material um, or to at least put it on a format that we can, can still read. So that might be CD, um, for example. Here we have boxes for um, slides uh, together with um, some explanation of what the slides are. So here we have in this box uh, Sudan United Mission, A New Way of Life, uh, and the commentary on the slides. Um, so this is what would have been given as um, a presentation or a lecture. This is Faith and Farm Complete. Um, so at least we have the information um, of what is on the slide, so that is very helpful. And in fact, very much like um, the microfiche and microfilm, it's uh, often very good quality. Um, however, we um, don't often have the slide projectors now um, to be able to, to view this. This would have been um, lit up onto a screen. Um, so again, this would be something that we would be looking to um, get into a digital format that we can use uh, on a PC. Here we have some slides in their original box uh, with this wax paper. Um, we can handle these quite easily because obviously slides have got their own um, protective surround that you can handle without damaging the negative. And here we have a light box um, to be able to light up the image so we can see exactly what it is we're looking at. Here we have a number of film negatives stored in tins. So this film strip is called Women's Class on Plateau by Carlton Hill Film Studios, London. So if we open this up, whenever you handle negatives or photographs, you need to wear gloves. Um, the acid on your your hands um, can do um, long-term damage to the quality of the negatives. So if we just pull this out, and here we have a strip of negatives. Difficult to tell which is the way up. There we go, I can see people now. We can use this light box um, to be better able to see 
what's on the film. I just weigh it down with a snake weight, one end. And now we can see very clearly the images, black and white film. Often with uh, book donations you might also receive um, other types of information, archival um, information such as um, photographs or postcards. Here we have some postcards of um, what you would have got, um, you know, memor memorabilia of places that you visited from collectors. And truly wonderful. Also we have um, photographs. Again you do need to wear gloves if you're handling photographs because uh, of the acid. And sometimes it's just a photographs in an envelope and if you're lucky you get the name of the place. Here we are uh, Kamchipuram in India. And these wonderful photographs. Sadly we don't necessarily know who everybody is on the photographs because nobody's written on the back. Again we have another package Sometimes you get the odd um, slides as well uh, in envelopes just of one particular place. Um, and here we go, an envelope with photographs but with no information on the envelope. In Special Collections we also have some wonderful artefacts. We don't actively um, collect works of art uh, unless it comes with a larger archive or collection. I have just two um, items uh, to show you today from uh, the artefacts that we hold in the Andrew Wall Centre for the Study of African and Asian Christianity. Part of that is a collection um, from John F. Butler that was donated um, from University of Edinburgh. And John F. Butler, um, his area of research was in um, uh, non-Western Christian art um, and certainly this um, item here that I'll show you features um, in his book Christianity in Asia and America um, and you can see one of the plates here as it was his own personal art collection. So here we have um, this wonderful uh, retabula from Peru. A retabula is a sophisticated Andean folk art in the form of a port in the form of portable boxes, which depict religious, historical, and everyday events that are important to the indigenous people of the highlands of Peru and Bolivia. So here we have um, Jesus on the cross in the top part and in the bottom part we have a hat shop. And here we have a um, very different item, uh, a wooden um, Nigerian mask. It's absolutely stunning. We were recently given this um, really interesting archive of newspaper cuttings um, taken from the Liverpool Echo and other local newspapers as well as national newspapers during the 1980s. This was a time um, when the far left militant Liverpool um, was running the council, um, the Derek Hatton um, of the day. Um, and uh, the collector, she who donated this, 
Uh, she was a head teacher at that time and so of course there was a direct um, correlation between uh, the council and how the schools were run um, and it affected her greatly and so she collected this archive um, for posterity um, and it does make for some shocking reading. I have a couple of items out to show you from the Nugent archive. Um, this started um, in mid 19th century um, Liverpool with Father Nugent um, who was instrumental in, in helping destitute children. At that time in Liverpool with the um, potato famine in Ireland and um, there was a huge population influx into Liverpool and um, there was a lot of um, disease, um, slum, slum living and um, typhoid epidemic. Um, and often you would see um, children on the streets hiding under bridges, sleeping in cardboard boxes if they were lucky. Um, and Father Nugent um, wanted to do something about that and he set up some night shelters um, and homes within Liverpool to help destitute children. And here we have some bound volumes of um, Father Berry's homes, uh, that was one of the homes that they set up for the children um, and these are the annual reports so this is 1892 to 1904 bound in one volume and within them you can see we have some very evocative images of uh, destitute children and they were designed uh, for that purpose they were trying to um, gain get money from people donations um, and so what they would do is um, they would list subscribers to the magazine and um, what people gave, how much they gave, um, in the hope that um, other people would see that, oh, Mrs Smith down the road has given three turkeys this Christmas, um, we ought to give, give something back as well. The reports are peppered with images of the children uh, before and after admission. Um, when they've been cleaned up, given haircuts and shoes and some nice clothes. And it's important to remember who was taking the photographs and for what purpose. Thinking about visual images, we're going to take a look at some of the uh, illustrations that you find in our rare books and manuscripts collection. Um, this can include woodcuts, uh, engravings, um, and also decorations done by hand um, from our medieval manuscripts. So these items that we have out come from the Radcliffe collection and that uh, belongs to the uh, Liverpool Cathedral. Here we have a 15th century manuscript on vellum um, which is uh, animal skin, um, specifically calf skin. And as you can see it's absolutely exquisite, the hand-drawn illustrations, as well as the um, actual text. This is a uh, book of hours um, uh, from the 15th century. This would have been owned by somebody with money, probably commissioned this item. Um, during the medieval and early modern period, um, the wealthy uh, would punctuate the day with prayer so they would have carried around this object with them so that they could pray throughout throughout the day. If you look closely at the decoration you will see just how fine the penmanship is. Beautifully executed, exquisitely done. Here we have the Herbal or General History of Plants by John Gerard, or more commonly Gerard's Herbal, dated from 1636. And this is where we can see where illustration is fundamental to the actual work. We have beautiful illustrations of the history of the plants and all the different species tulips. And 
violets. This would have been used by um, as reference work really for um, for people and this is something that Shakespeare would have referred to. These are engravings on metal where you get a very uh, fine edge um, so you can have a lot more intricate detail compared with uh, wood engravings. This rather large volume known as a folio is the uh, Acts and Monuments of Martyrs by John Fox or as he became known Fox's Book of Martyrs and this has a wonderful fold out illustration we unfold it like so this glorious uh, fold out full of engravings of illustrations of the different ways that you can be put to death depicts the martyrdom of the Protestants, uh, the Church of England, under the persecution of the heathen tyrannies of Rome, as it states there. Absolutely gruesome. This is the uh, title page of the second volume, and as you can see in this wonderful engraving, we have King Henry VIII here, looking very regal, holding his sword. Uh, this figure here is Cranmer, Thomas Cranmer, and Thomas Cromwell behind him and here he is passing to him the Bible, the Great Bible in English and under his feet we have the Pope and his crown has fallen off his head. Finally we come to a much smaller volume. This is from the Talbot Library which belongs to the Diocese of Lancaster so uh, a Catholic collection and here we have a hieroglyphic Bible dating from the 18th century. If we open it up, we can see that pictures have been used to tell the story of the Bible. So here we have, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Right at the bottom of the page we have the words as they are meant to be, in case you weren't sure what the pictures were of.